all together now we've been going for three years um, obviously we would like to grow as an organization we're the only national organization um, that exists solely to promote the prevention of racism so we think that we play a really important role in this country um, the, the last three years we've been focusing a lot on um, getting people to have constructive conversations about racism so they understand racism better and they understand their own attitudes and behaviour and how they can play a role in, um, in preventing racism. Uh, we give people tips and tools about how to speak up against racism and, and what to do in particular circumstances. Um, and we do that mostly uh, online using video and Facebook and you know our blog and so on but we're not sure to what extent people are actually using that in the real world. Um, so for example, you know, the various um, incidences of racism on the bus recently in Sydney, um, from what I hear, no one spoke up in those incidences or, or not many people. Um, not many people helped to console the, the person who was unfortunately the victim in that circumstance. So. Uh, I'm not sure how many people are actually reading what we do and um, reading our advice, you know, and using our tools. So that's are you get, we are can you, do better. <laughs> are you, but are you are you actually getting you know people interacting with your with online? The we are, but I guess I'm trying to to say that yeah, you don't know whether the the online stuff is having an effect offline in the real world. If you, yeah. Yeah. So you haven't yet measured any of that. So. we we haven't measured it, no. And, I, and the reason we haven't measured it, because we would dearly love to measure it, is because of funding, of course. Um, so altogether now, we, we don't have any operational funding, we only have project funding. And even the project funding is quite limited. Wow. So for example, none of our um, social media work is funded, for example, because mm. um, it's not seen as a project, wow. unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, that's part of Part of our problem, why we haven't been able to measure it. You're not getting, you're not getting institution funding as like as an organisation. You're only getting project by project funding. Yes, that's wow. correct. That's hard work. Very. So um, I get paid one day a week at the moment and work five, and that's because I manage a project. It's project funding. Wow. Yeah. So it's hard work. Yeah. And I, I really, I hate the situation and I'd really dearly love it to change, mm. but I haven't found an answer yet about how to, mm. how to get all that operational funding. Because racism is, you know, a difficult topic. So mm. it's not, it's not, you know, a topic that people, I guess, uh, are not interested in funding or, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> I haven't worked that out yet. Mm. <laughs> there's ethnic radio stations and there's SBS. Um, you know, which is all great, and we need that to, um, you know, to build people's confidence and and get ethnic media out there. But I think really what needs to change is the status quo of the mainstream media. That's where the real problem is right now. So that's what we want to do. But um, yeah, like home and away neighbors. There's so much tokenism. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing. I actually I feel really embarrassed about it as yeah. an Australian. Yeah, it's it's not representative of what you see out in, on the street. So it needs to change. So you, you guys, say, like as all together now, you're working on some ideas in the future. Um, we would like to. Yes, like I said, it's it's on my on my short to do list. I've got a list of um, projects that I'd like to do in the next three years, you know, because we're currently working on a next strategic plan mm -hmm. um, and that's certainly on it. <laughs> it's actually, the, it's, it's more to it than just the message. So for example, if we were, if we put something online at night, we tend to get more, more comments just, just because more people are, are looking at Facebook, I think. So I think it's more than just the message. Um, I think one of the most popular posts that we've ever put up um, is we created an infographic about what to do if you witness racism on the bus because it was really practical and it was really timely and it was pretty um, and it got shared a lot. Um, so that was that was great. In terms of One Parramatta, which is our, um, I guess, on the street project, um, we are 
like there's been a lot of interest in, in that project um, and from that perspective it's been really successful. Um, I think the reason for that success is because we've used different like multiple ways of um, getting our message across so it hasn't just been about Facebook um, it's also been on YouTube it's also been at the Parramatta Cinema the event cinema um, and we've also been talking to people on the streets about it we've also had postcards so I think that multi-dimensional approach works a lot better but to do that really well you have to have a really big budget so <laughs> Hence why we tend to um, rely a lot on social media because, you know, you can get a volunteer and then the tools are, are free, I guess, to use. So, you know, <laughs> it's the obvious, obvious way to start. Yeah. With that, I mean, I could almost do a master's thesis on that alone, on that question. Have you read... Um, uh, Sarah Madison's book Beyond White Guilt she talks about um, colonialism and how um, yeah pe white people are still there's still generational guilt about colonialism and then how we deal with that and how that prevents us from talking about racism so I think in a way yes I think they should keep some of their own culture um, it's part of their identity. So if if you're telling them that they must become like this, this and this, um, you're basically asking them to stop being who they are and try and be someone else. Um, and I think that's, yeah, that's, that's really unfair and it gives people bad self-esteem, I think. Um, it affects who they are personally. Um, so I don't think that's a good idea. Um, Okay, I would say that some Australians hate Arabs. I wouldn't say that all Australians hate Arabs. Would it would be the same as saying that all Arabs are X or all you know Muslims are X? So um, the general answer to that would be no. But certainly um, there would be some Australians who do hate Arabs. Um, actually, the statistics say that um, around one in ten people have problematic racist attitudes so um, I'm guessing that you know some of the people in that group would certainly have racist attitudes toward Arabs <laughs>